So, game starting up, ladies and gentlemen, and let's go for it. The Bucky Boys against the No Names. The No Names starting this one off on the attack side. I think this is something, so I've seen an awful lot of variety in how defenders hold this map. We do have a Cypher here on the defensive side. Would not be surprised if he is the, the solo player over on B. And again, there are some really, really good uh, camera angles that he can take, find information. Are they outside B or not? If they're not, uh, a lot of teams opt to just stack the A side of things. So I think that's going to be a big part of this game right now. And I'm pretty sure it is because he's looking away from the map. Yeah, at this point, we have actually on an agent side a situation where we have pretty much the exact same lineup on each side with one key difference here. On one side, Phoenix is playing is played as the fifth agent. On the other side, we have Ray. So a little bit of different abilities that we bring here. But as we already pointed out, Brimstone, Breach, Cypher, and also Sage played on both sides now for this one. Pretty clear and obvious, isn't it? I think that fifth slot is going to be a bit of a rotating door, but... Those four yep. names will continue to make appearances for yeah. sure. I like the Phoenix. I do like the Phoenix, though. I absolutely agree. I mean, the core four setups here, that's something that we're probably going to see quite an awful lot now. Bit of a slowdown over here on A already. Spike still sitting in middle. And this is a very, very slow approach now to the first round. But the first kill comes in as Knalla takes down Mastermind. So the attackers in a numeric advantage in this first round. Be slow start, like you say, but just catching the player off guard. I like the barrier coming in as well. They're working into the area that they picked up the kill. And continue to push forwards on the ropes, though. Reflex is going to find Nala, and it all kind of breaks down. They're a little all over the place. The trade does come back in onto Yash. So they brought it back into the three versus three here, but not before the rotations come in. Not before they defend this heaven area. Yeah, good move by Reflex here. The attacker side, after getting the kill mid, middle of the wall off and then trying to zerk onto A. That worked for a second, but Reflex coming in with the second kill now. Doing a fantastic job here. Last man standing now on the attacker side and scratch that. That's the He's last one going down. Reflex with a third kill in the round. And that puts the point onto the scoreboard for the Bucky boys. Nicely done by them. Yeah, really well done. Um, it started off a little shaky. Early kill comes in for the attackers. Well, no names, but they do a really, really good job, I think, of just playing it slow on the defensive side and picking up the pieces, right? They collapse onto that, that A Heaven Vents area um, and make sure they just can't leave, right? Picking players off left, right, and center, and they have no idea how to approach things on the attacking side. Yeah, from the attacker side, it felt a little bit like they needed to also have a few people push in from A long at the same time to just make sure that they're not getting picked off in the window area here. But instead, then I was switching things up and seemed to be committing to B. Still two of them sitting mid, but everybody else already moving in. Camera pointed out perfectly. Gets the dart in. All right. And now the rotation from the defenders right away towards B. Trying to save the spot here. No kill so far. But there's already one of the defenders trying to move in from behind in order to get a couple of easy kills. Yeah, really, really smart play here once again. Working off of the information absolutely massive in this game it does appear yash i think is just gonna miss them unfortunately and then it's all a decision of does she push into the tunnels or does she track that they've gone mid oh just getting steps in towards mid great flash coming in mastermind able to get one while blinded that's pretty big does get traded back but the spike spotted and they're all caged in here at middle another kill coming in for zinjet see whether he can get any more at this point one versus three gonna get stunned up as well not looking too good but some yes. damage done yeah, Zay taking the last kill here. And again, we're looking at a situation where if you lose the first round, of course, you are going to play the eco round. And so this is the one that really matters the most, I'd say, because now we're looking at a full buy for the no-names. And they are in a position where they can just easily get themselves a few vandal vandals, which is going to be super nice for especially a side. And this is going to matter a whole lot more. But I like the Cypher play here again, just keeping track of the tunnel, not having to peek around the corner in any way, and that allowed them an easy rotation without even losing a member before they set up the defense there. This is why I like the Phoenix, by the way. Um, I, I think they're aware of what side they start on, and he's able to just get a, a nice bit of solo information plus aggression. His ultimate is really, really useful as well. Unfortunately, the first kill goes against him in this round. 
Let's see whether they can find anything else. Mastermind in at middle on this Spectre, interestingly enough. Yeah, Mastermind getting the kill. Four versus four right now. Wall is still up. I can still peek around it a little bit. Spike gets picked up now too, and they're starting to move their way towards the middle, where we still have two defenders holding the mid area. Cypher, of course, ready with the camera on B, so you can always double check what's going on over there. <laughs> Brutal kill against Yash, and that opens up A, and immediately we have no names rushing onto the point. If he can get the plant, at least it's another 300 already. Send on with a kill against Mastermind, and that's a three versus one with only Breach still standing. Very low though, this is definitely doable, right? He's already picked up one, the, the full HP player. The last two players are so, so low here. Great flash coming in though. Kenson will get him on the side. Pretty yeah, big round good... coming in from the attackers. Good play by Kenson here too. I mean, three kills for him. Because as you said, they were both incredibly low. So <laughs> that could have been... I mean, if Breach gets a drop on them, that's an easy double kill for him. So that was a clutch one after all, but that is quite a bit of money that the attack has now picked up for themselves. Outside of the kills alone, we have 3,000 just for winning the round and they get another 300 credits for also initiating the spike here. Let's go. That's actually fantastic for them. Easy full buy. And that might just give them that momentum now that they needed. And that was lost in those initial two rounds. Yeah, hopefully keeping it a bit spicier. The uh, eco going to come out here. I think a bit of a force buy, actually, from the Bucky boys. The early pick coming in for the attackers as well. No names. Looking relatively good, but yeah, we saw an awful lot of what I was kind of alluding to with the Phoenix. If you are decent on this agent, you can really set up a lot of your own plays. But there it comes, of course, the Ray's Rocket. Still a little annoying. Another kill in at middle as well. They're definitely doing some damage here, but it is a man advantage at the moment for No Name. Yeah, three to two situation. Attack again. Attackers. They had all the money they needed after the last round here. Two of them not even dying, so kept all their weapons. Could easily buy a few weapons for the rest of the team. So they are fully equipped here. A little bit of a My peek. Camera, camera at the top is also found out. It's the dart in for just a second, but now they know that they hold that position completely. So b side getting swamped with the last remaining three. And what are the defenders now going to do? How are they going to approach this? Seems like we're going to have the first one moving in over the window, potentially. Ah, from behind, actually, just waiting for the second one to get into position. But this is not going to be an easy retake. I have other ideas here. They both managed to get a rifle. Also, Reflex is uh, 6 HP, so... yeah. Maybe not feeling it, but saving those two rifles away is uh, pretty good for the next round. Yeah. Probably the best thing that they can do, actually, at this point. Because, bo again, as we said, both of them didn't really have a lot of resources there, so now getting the rifles is going to help them. Hit points, of course, all super important, so they just move back. And retaking this wouldn't have been easy anyways. Like the camera, great vision, <laughs> well set up here. <laughs> a little bit of a narcissist, maybe, but hey. That's a new cell fever. All right, two is two. We're looking at the tie. Three ults are ready for the attacker side as they are starting to shift towards speed. There's a beautiful thing about the game here. Like with all of the maps that we have, there's easy rotations possible. And you're just usually starting to poke a little bit, see if you can maybe get a pick on one of the sides and then you start the rotation. But now we're looking at a setup Steady. where both teams are again fully equipped. Over here also a Phantom for the defender side as we're looking towards um, the Mastermind. You're dead. They're really right. going for this in towards middle off the back of the uh, run it back as well. Nice pickup coming in. Or oh, if you'd have managed to get the second, he sets up the second though, right? The whole team is there. The information is in. Going for a really fast round here. What we call a B split typically. We'll see whether Jangaroo can hold things down. Not possible. Only good for one. And now into a four versus two. There's also a lurking presence on the back side of things as well. I think going to make it really difficult for the defense to, to get in here. Oh, there it is. Killing at middle. Well caught. The Phoenix having a great round. Now it was a great start with say. Phoenix opening things up. And that's, of course, the power of the ult that you have on him, that he can just simply make those engages. He got a kill set up, as he said, the second, which was super important here, too. We saw Reflex earlier. I mean, again, those two are the wild cards. Reyes and Phoenix. And Phoenix earlier got the uh, kill with her own ult. 
hitting the Lockwood launcher into play. Phoenix this time the one to uh, make the play and engage the entire attack. The first kill in sets the second one up and allows them to just like swarm onto B. A little bit of a safe attempt here for Ray's, but that's the lead now. Three rounds in a row, won by the No Names. Which also means that the Bucky Boys, of course, get now the 2,900 hit points uh, credits. This is looking really good here, I think, uh, within this game. We're going to see an awful lot of adaptations in terms of the strategy rather than the same attacking movements over and over again as we saw in the previous game. So that's always good. Be interested to see, though. I think they that's might just there. have tapped into oh, something a little bit here on the attacking side of things. No Name just overwhelming a, a certain area seems to have gone very well for them in the past couple of rounds. So maybe going to try and go for that again. Yeah, great setup here with Cypher again, so he's going to be the one to control the tunnel on B. Attackers are more interested in A and middle. Middle in general is a little bit... Uh, brimstone old here to zone them out. But I want to talk a little bit about middle, because middle is kind of interesting. Most of the time you're just staring at smokes over here. Especially with brimstone available on both sides, it is a bit crazy. So this one is just a huge slowdown. And at some point, they could decide to push through the smokes here, especially if they are setting something up with Breach, who also has his ult ready. And there it is. Puts that in. They're starting to make the move, but instead we have the kill against Mastermind right away. Attackers with a 5 versus 4. Jengaru, on the other hand, gets the kill against Knalla, equalizing the numbers, at least for now. But of course, the gist is up, and everybody on the A side has started the rotation towards middle and towards B. Slowing it down slightly. But they exactly know where the spike is now as well. Well, it comes out once again on the other side. They're trying to go through the smoke here. And another kill this time against Raze. The attackers once more an invitation to Raze on the map. Oh, Yash in such a good spot though. Only able to get one. Maybe should have done a little bit more from there. At least spots out the spike and the fact that they are moving towards the A site. But now the defenders not able to get this man advantage back and that's all the attackers have been working off of there is one player lagging behind so they could definitely catch off the two initial attackers on this a site if they move fast enough don't think a great deal of ordnance available we will see the fault line come through but not really able to move off of it more just throwing it in there i think they are very apprehensive here as you can see the cypher has no ordnance left at all and now that lagging behind player has managed to catch up and time really ticking down they've got to start moving into the site here they have no information to work with it's going to be so tough one for one trade in on the site and ah jangaroo not able to find anything unfortunately so now this lead begins to expand for no names yeah it definitely does they have all the credits that they need now for the defender side again they get at least another 2900 per round because they haven't won one in a long time right now so they will be able to get themselves some decent weapons and armor but it is getting rough as you already said and the good news is that of course a lot of the olds on the attacker sides were now used they still have the resurrect they still have also brimstone's old so they could use that to just simply yeah push the opponent back and for example go through middle towards a window again let's see if they are going to use it here first of all the flash is coming out shotgun there's the judge Waiting around the corner, exactly what we talked about earlier. Those are these close quarter fights where a good shotgun can be absolutely amazing for you. Covering the smoke, trying to get a lucky hit in. And the spike rotates over towards B. Yeah, I think they might have learned from the previous round not to stand on the other side of those smokes. Um, there was a couple of kills through smoke, I think, for the attacking side that really turned the tides of that round. So now just letting them go down, playing it. Passive, the defense here. Not taking the peaks, not taking the fights, despite the fact that they're like, okay, two or three players around middle, we know that because they're just spraying through. They are playing very passive angles across the map. Reflex is pretty much the only one playing for information here. A bit of utility going to come through the slow orb as well to slow them down. They're happy to wait it out. They've got plenty of time to work with. Yeah, Reyes, on the other hand, was trying to slow the approach on A down a bit with those cluster bombs. Still two sitting in middle cannot rotate through the ropes of course go over there the attempt with the judge to get the kill so far unsuccessful the rest of the team is pushing into a the quick kill against knala we also have yash taken out right away afterwards another kill against the defenders reflexes down four versus three with another 13 seconds to go 
We need four to plant down the spike, but here comes the kill against Mastermind, and that leaves the two versus four situation on the map in a really dicey spot for the defenders. Camera is in, gets taken down right away by Zay. He tries to get the kill against Cypher, but has to be careful since Brimstorm is also around. Not looking too good here. He loses his teammate as well. Sat inside the molly. He does manage to get the wall bang, but burns in the process. Another round coming in for no names. And unfortunate, I think, to be honest. There's there's an argument to be made for playing passive on the defensive side, sure. When you've fallen flat to quite a few rushes, right? By taking aggressive peaks early on. However, as the round begins to um, um, get down to the final few seconds, final 30 seconds, you don't have any information to work with. So they're essentially in a five versus two, four versus two in on that A site. And they're still going to get overwhelmed by the burst play that's coming in. So I think it's a really, really tough one for them. They have to hit their shots. It doesn't quite happen. And then ultimately just the man advantage coming through um, and some of the ordinance that they had left working for them. But here they are living up to their name, the Bucky Boys. Kangaroo <laughs> has finally pulled one out. I feel it was also in the last round a bit of a lack of information that they had. Initially, everybody knew, okay, they had at least six players, three on each side, sitting in the middle with all the smokes there and everybody shooting. But they just snuck three of their players over to A and kept one or two remaining to just get a couple of shots through. And then A was just a little bit surprised of this many people coming in. Here's the flash once again. Great one, actually. And Zay gets a kill of it. Three versus two now, and still the attempt to get some of those cluster bombs in, and actually also got the kill there. Three versus two spot. And the spike is currently in the hands of the defenders. Pretty tricky to get for the attacker's side, but they get the kill against Zay at least to equalize the numbers. Really good stuff from Zay there, using uh, the, the breach flashpoint through the wall. Oh, Red's coming in as well. This could be pretty big. Let's Did see. they miss the spike? Not quite I, sure. I think they still are on their way to retrieving it, right? Which is not going to give them an awful lot of time. No, I mean, I don't mean the attack as the defender side. I thought they were exactly Oh, there. right. If they, if they saw it, they could have... I, I, I would assume that if they saw it, they would have taken some different positions in order to just make sure yeah. that nobody grabs oh, it no. up. So it seems like they actually had it in vision of a close to it. I actually realize. Oh, we're just oh. not inside, and there's a kill, oh my god. <laughs> Knala comes in, gets taken out a second after he gets the hit. And that's another win for the no-names. A couple in from the pistol round, getting a bit of a reminder of that, but... Yeah, really, really good round from, from the breach, honestly, on the defensive side. And then the attackers, I think they, they could have pulled that one back a little. Um, to be honest, uh, messing it up ever so slightly. The, the the revive was a great idea. They had A, the numbers, and B, better weapons, but just Ooh. time, their greatest enemy. Sexy position here also for Sage. That's actually a really nice angle. I don't think that you can see the wall from the outside, so that's a nice one to get yourself a bit of a high ground. If Star Wars taught us anything, then it's the higher ground always wins, so can't argue with that. Definitely good to have, and like you say, hard to spot, I think, is the key thing with that position. Not being put into great use as yet. We are going to see a Rolling Thunder come through from the defensive side. In fact, on oh, Reflex through the smoke, picks up two. They will manage to actually somehow keep things even here on the attacking side, despite being blind, knocked up, slowed fire rate. Now we'll see the attacking Rolling Thunder come through. It is a three versus two. It's ultimately just a ploy to recover the spike back. 10 HP here for Breach, not really looking too good. They've opted to move away from middle, move away from B. As these past few rounds, it's been really tough for them to break through that area. Yeah, Yash is also sitting on A already, just waiting for exactly that move. Good position for him. This could be yeah, the one course. where the Bucky boys are starting to maybe start a bit of a comeback here. Yash gets the kill, nicely done, and Ooh. the second one, perfect position for him here. Up at the top on A. Well played by him, a great angle for him. Just eye, out, eye down A and able to get the double kill against the remaining attacker. So the third point now for the defenders. Hopefully spurs them forwards. I didn't catch everybody else, but as you can see, as we're, we're on Sage here. Okay, here we go. So we're rotating through a little bit. Um, fair amount of ultimates available, fair amount of ordnance that doesn't really need uh, buying back up, I think, on the defensive side there as well. 
It looks like they're going to go back to what they've been doing most of these rounds, though, and just pressure mid. Three players in at mid. Ordnance probably going to get moved down. Oh, lovely camera <laughs> angle there. <laughs> At this Absolutely point, he's just lovely. showing off. I mean, he showed three different camera angles already for the tunnel. I only think one of the cameras was picked up so far. So he's just switching it up the entire time. Absolutely love that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if they've patched it, but there's a really nasty one that you can do on the B-bomb side that sees like over the um, the hut in towards the attacker yeah. spawn. I, I not sure have if to assume that one, that that one was already bad. Yeah. That was insane. Right, the the he comes yeah. in, Mastermind with the chipper, Nisa on the other hand has also got one, two standing on each side. Here uh -oh. comes the ult, and that's a beautiful hit, Mastermind with the fourth kill now, working on the ace. Last man standing is Xinjet on Brimstone. He's the one with the spike, could try and at least drop that, needs to be careful though, has a little bit of time left as the defenders are starting to move in here. But, yeah, <laughs> this is going to be a nasty one. The second he starts planting, they know exactly where he is. Oh, that Cypher ultimate available as well if they really feel like they need it. Not afraid to let him get the bomb oh, down. He too has his ultimate available. Oh, the wrong side of the site, unfortunately. Not able to isolate them properly. And Jangaroo making good use of just kind of the animation, ultimately catching him off guard, finding the frag, and therefore the round. Yeah. And Jangaroo is pulling it back. Denying the ace, and that's a report right there. <laughs> at, that at, at that point, you're just giving it up for your teammate. You know, you play the bait, and you just let him get the fifth kill. But nah, he doesn't have any of that. So uh, yeah, four kills only for Brimstone on the defender side. Jangaroo here with the final hit. Has he done four against six? Yeah, yeah so blowouts they've had in game number one are actually happy. This is gonna be a much, much closer game. Both of the teams fully equipped, as you can see here. We have pretty much Watch exclusively Vandals. We have one Operator on the defending side, and we have one Phantom for the attackers. Outside of that, it's Vandals all day, every day. Big difference, yeah. of course. I mean, both of the weapons cost the exact same amount, 2,900 creds. Big difference is, as we pointed out earlier, that with a Vandal, even on the long distance, you can get an insta-kill with a headshot, no matter how much armor your opponent has. Moving away from mid this round, more towards the A side of things. Great little angle from Reflex, but Smoke's only down. good for the one. Still though, I think he spotted a fair amount of them, heard a fair amount of them. So the rotate's going to start to come through. They try and move ahead of the smokes. Interesting. They will, again, find the one-for-one -one trade. The bomb has yet to go down. There is a player in elbow right here. Now that has an idea, but not able to find the frag. That's the spike as well. That's all the information that they need, surely. Only trade patiently. So Two versus two, but Jenkowu is incredibly low. Seven HP for him, and he's getting eliminated. No counter kill this time, at least not just yet. And as we said, spikes down, but could now be planted. Only one defender remaining, Mastermind. He really needs to find a good angle now if he wants to get those kills in. And the attackers are just going to wait this out. Camera already revealing him. Needs to remove the spider, which is exactly what he does, but they know, of course, perfectly well where he is now. And there's the kill. Nicely done by Breach. Mastermind down. And the attackers with another point. 7 to 4. Last round in the half. Really well done. The aftershock, I think, pretty much sealed the deal. He, he couldn't really get away from it. Very well placed indeed. All right, attackers, once again, no names. Starting to move towards mid first. We have one of them still sitting on A. You see, maybe we can get a quick pick here. That's the beauty of mid. You can quickly rotate towards the tunnels here. You can use the ropes as well to make your way over to A. So if your A player gets an easy kill, good spot there. Another Joke's camera over. angle You're here dead. from Jangaroo. This time on A, though. Uh, they push through the smokes once again with the ult. Phoenix trying to get the kill against Zay. Couldn't lock it in. Mastermind, though, takes down Phoenix. And Mastermind himself taken apart just a second later. Four versus four situation again, but it seems like the attackers are going to focus a little bit more on two mid now once again. But defenders are ready. I mean, the Bucky Boys has definitely learned the lessons from the early few rounds here on the map. Yeah, definitely. Mid was a huge, huge issue for them, and, and they have managed to pick it up somewhat towards the tail end of this first half. We do see the revive coming back through, however, which is really going to make a difference. As you can see, Ray's half HP 
and a five versus four against them. The defensive side have got an awful lot of work to do here. They're trying to get the healing off. It's a little awkward there around the corner. Big Sage Wall coming through as well that gives an awful lot of information away. They have to spray through it. They really do want to dedicate towards B here, and uh, the defenders are ready. They are very ready for this, for sure. So they have got to be sure of themselves. They've got to be careful. I don't think they have too much ordnance left. And they have to run through. Just try and find the frags. Yash with the double lineup, able to pick up two. He's still got Phoenix coming towards him, and the warband comes through. The two versus three now in favor of the attacking side. Yeah. I'm actually a little bit surprised that nobody picked up that old orb when the wall went down. I mean, that was the perfect cover to actually get that, and I think if he did, Brimstone would now have his ult ready for this one. It would really help them to secure the round here. First of all, it's Beach on the other hand moving in. Attackers trying to get the kill, and Sinjet gets the one against Zay. That's the three versus one. They only have to take Cypher down, who's able to pick up the kill against Phoenix, though. 5 HP. Not looking too good. The spike's starting to really, really tick down now. He has the information of where they're at. Oh, but the slow orb is going to make it so hard. Yeah, he just has to go for it. Can't really find it. So an 8-4 finish on the first half. Pretty good for, for No Name then. And, and honestly, I think we had talked a little bit about how this map edging towards the defensive side. So that may well be an issue that they've only picked up four rounds on that defending side of the map. There's a couple of the highlights also from just the last one as we went through there. Some of really, really nice kills here. Of course, the early lead that we saw for the defenders, for the Bucky boys, and then very, very quickly, the no name started to pick up one win after another. So well done by them as we're now heading into the second half of the game. The lead still with eight points to four in favor of the no names as they now find themselves trying to def mid in particular, as it seems. Yep, it. Again, as is the case on an awful lot of maps in these tactical FPSs, mid is very, 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 very important. It gives you control um, of a key area and also the option to go both A and B most of the time. Uh, maybe C as well, depending on what map you're playing. So far, we still have a race, just getting a few of the classic grenades out, which can always be super annoying. I mean, it's one of those things, it just feels bad dying to it, generally speaking. If you hear it coming, it can most of the time move back, but there are, of course, incredible plays where you see Rays coming in with a cluster grenade in one of those small catacomb areas, for example. Hookah and Bind would be another example. And there you have just, if not a kill, then at least huge damage that you dished out. Molly! Go though, the burst on towards the A site, going to be coming through, the ordnance coming down, and in on the site, it's going to be Tornado 7, the information not quite coming in, does manage to land that second headshot, will get traded back by Yash, who is left on 20 HP, getting the spike down into a 3 versus 3 now, heal available for the Sage as well, which is going to be so, so important, I think they've used so much ordnance here, it's going to be hard for them to hold things off, once the defenders start to move in. And of course, it's also expensive. That ice wall costs you 300 credits. That is quite a bit. And it pretty much ensures that you can't buy yourself a proper pistol at the beginning of the first round. But it's so impactful when you get it. And, well, the defenders they simply ignore it here, swarm them completely from the other side, are just able to outgun them a bit to get their headshots in and take them down. And that's another point in favor of the no names. And it's going to make for a pretty annoying round two for the Bucky boys, who are very likely not going to buy huge weapons here. Oftentimes we see the team that loses the first round in the half not buying anything except for utility, stocking up on those slow orbs, those walls and whatnot. So we'll actually see if they this time invested into a few pistols or guns, but I highly doubt it. So if the defenders play this well, with everything that they could just buy on those credits, they ha should have a pretty big advantage heading into this second round of the half. Behind the Roomba, using it as information there in that middle, the, the wall coming in as well, quite perfect, but does its job. Oh. Oh, okay, nice little bait and switch coming through. Nala is able to take out Zay, and I think with jumping on top of the wall, a lot of information coming through there. Uh, from the Phoenix, trying to get the flash over the wall doesn't quite work, but uh, it's all good. No harm, no foul. Looking they good here. They are really holding uh, their mid enough. Down. Yeah. Yeah. Phoenix coming in just after Sage's wall is eliminated. I mean, there is so much time lost already for the attackers as they're trying to make their way through. We have a few sheriffs in their hands, but as we said previously, there are just no big rifles over here in their hands. So the no-names are holding the mid very well for quite some time. 
two down on the side of the Baki boys as they're trying to push in. No names also had some casualties, but here comes another nice. great kill from Jinjet against Yash. Yeah, it drops a spike as well. It's a pretty big one, to be honest. It was uh, looking slightly scary because they had managed to creep their way into B Heaven. As you can see, Reflex here, the only one left. But the spike is lagging behind them. Of course, you can't be winning the round if you ain't planting it. So, really good pick up there coming through and, and a nice clean round. They only lose the one player. And as you touched on, very well done in at middle to not get super aggressive. They're actually just stopping them from pushing mid rather than taking the fight in mid. And I, I kind of like that. Uh, methodology. Yeah. Now, this is going to be one of the rounds that's going to be highly important for the Buggy Boys. They finally have the resources to uh, buy some uh, proper some proper weapons here. They should have bought also a lot of the utility in the last round, so this is one where they have to make a bit of a dent into the defense of No Names. If not win the round, then at least get a lot of kills in, plant that spike, work a bit on uh, the economy. If again, good camera here. A little bit more of an obvious one in this case on uh, from the Bucky Boys side, but they see everything on A that they need to see it now. But the attack is focusing onto middle again. And middle, honestly, is a little... I mean, that's a bit of a lockdown from uh, from No Names. They do this exceptionally well. Sage Wall, Phoenix is oh. helping out there too. Oh, that is beautiful. Mastermind goes down. He's in the slow orb. And then the Phoenix Hot Hands come through as well. That that Molotov from him, fantastic. Reflex though has got a nasty angle and maybe getting slightly overzealous there. Will trade that kill back after such a nice play. They have worked that out. I think they bounced it um, off the the opposing wall, and it just it's a free kill. There's nothing at all that the Brimstone can do to escape. And they've kind of thrown it away a little bit here. Yeah, we can see that the Bucky boys are just now starting to switch over to A because they realize, hey, mid is not happening for us. And there's only one sitting here. Xenon needs to be the one to call it out. He's playing super patient and moves immediately out. No kill for him yet. Makes the call. The rest of the team should start to slowly rotate or at least have one shift. That's exactly what's happening here. Again, gets the lines through. He's at the top already. Sinjet gets the kill against Jangaru, gets the kill against Zay. That's a double kill for him and only two attackers remaining and time is ticking. And they are out of time to plant the spike, but can they get the kills in? And they cannot. Triple kill for Sinjet takes down Yash. Yeah, really well played from him in that kind of hell position. Just, just weaving in and out and... Yeah, when you're on that attacking side, you really do have to pay attention to the time. It, it works against you a little bit. If you let it run down too much, you see exactly what we just saw. I've casted uh, tactical FPSs for quite a while, and it does happen more often than you would like. It gets down to kind of 30, 25 seconds, and it seems like, oh, oh we got to get in there, I guess. And they all just run in so messy, so uncoordinated. So you really have to make sure you're keeping track of that time. Yeah, big approach now towards A, so they're really shifting away from that middle after. Several approaches now where they get just completely yeah, shut help. down this time. Different setup here. Good ult being used though. A little bit of damage done. Not enough just yet, but zones them out slightly. Drives a wedge between them. Ropes are going to be super important right now. The stage is already starting to move in. There's tons of pressure on the attackers already as they're trying to make the plays here. Attack comes in. Zay goes down. Mastermind and Yasha also falling. Two versus four, two versus five as the Razorite comes in. The no names looking fantastic in this round once again. Yeah, only the one player remaining and Jangaru not able to find anything. Really, really good stuff there. And the issue for Bucky Boys, I think, is if you're going to expend that big ordinance, the orbital strike, um, you have to work off of it. They kind of just floated in that heaven area, not really doing anything. And we saw the flank comes in from ropes and, and they're just caught with their pants down completely. So if you're going to make a decision, you have to act on it. You can't just sit in an area uh, deciding, twiddling your thumbs. And it really does cost them. I think once again, we are seeing where it was closer when, when we were in the first half. We're now seeing a discombobulated attacking side once again here in this game. Um, and now one round in it, they've got to get eight in a row to take it to overtime and I think it's going to be very difficult. They do have a relatively strong buy-in here, as you can see, as we're flicking through the players. The op in play, and there it is. Mastermind making it work. Finds an opening pick on the A sites. That's exactly what they need right now. Get this thing started off with a few good kills. Because as you said, if they lose this round, then it is lights out in this 
it's part of the bracket. Here comes the flash as they're moving in. Trying to go for the wall bank, gets the wall out too, so trying to zone them off as quickly as they can. Spike, on the other hand, is now starting to slowly rotate over towards B. So they're starting to abandon A, but the no-names are not being fooled here. They still have someone sitting in the middle trying to wait for exactly that approach. And you can actually tell that they're also still having a lock on B, especially, of course, with the side. Pick up, though, coming in from Nizo. Say we'll trade Nala. So they're still retaining this man advantage, just about, just by the skin of their teeth, moving in towards the B site. I think they have been seen here by the Cypher camera and all that ordnance now coming in to keep them back. So much of it. I mean, they can't really go anywhere at the moment. Janguru has got to be very careful with that spike. He drops it in such an awkward spot. Tornado sat towards the B rope here. Going to get another as well before he goes down. And that's just created the space. There's no time. Oh, what a way to lose it. What a way to lose it. It was looking so good for them. And... And, and Janguru just loses the bomb. Oh, man.